This morning my Twitter feed was full of stories like, I can't lock my house or I can't start my toaster. And it's all because there was a fault with one of the data centers for Amazon Web Services. This really highlights one of the problems of internet connected devices. And uh, you really need to think about if you are setting stuff up in your house, is it dependent on external services? So there are really two principles that I have when I set up my own systems. The first principle is no external dependencies. So let me explain what I mean. Now if you go and buy, say, an internet enabled light globe or a, an internet enabled door lock, what they typically do is use some external service. It will be a server that's running um, on Amazon Web Services or somewhere like that. And when the lock is running, it connects back out to that service in order to receive commands and send updates. If you want to control it from, say, an app on your phone, your phone doesn't connect directly to the lock. It connects to that service out there running on a server. That means that you can be sitting at home and have your lock a couple of meters from you, have your phone in your hand, and when you send it a command, you're not sending the command to the lock. You're sending it to a service that could be 10,000 kilometers away and then it comes back again to your lock. That can be really, really bad if your internet connection drops out or, as we saw this morning, if the hosting environment that is running that external service goes down. So you really need to make sure that whatever systems you use, you can operate totally in isolation. I have a really bad internet connection. Um, in some ways that's really good because what it's done is forced me to set up all of my services to operate locally. Everything that I have running in my house doesn't depend on some external server to work in order to be able to operate. So my door locks, which are controlled by the home automation system, don't have any external connection requirements. Then also my lights, heating, like blinds, everything else. I don't need to have an internet connection. And because my internet connection drops out a couple of times a day, it would drive me insane if it did. What that has forced me to do is make sure that my architecture is totally self-contained or everything is hosted locally. Now my system can use my internet connection to allow remote access. So if I'm away from home, I can pull up my phone and open the blinds and control the lights, all of that stuff. But I don't need that just to do normal things day to day. And the second principle, so the first principle is self-contained, don't have any external dependencies. The second principle is mechanical overrides. So one of the questions I get a lot is people saying, oh, but if there's a blackout, how do you control your lights? And the obvious answer is, if there's a blackout, no one controls their lights. But it's not just lights. If you have a blackout, you don't want to be locked in your house. So what I make sure I do is, where it's appropriate, I have mechanical overrides for any of those systems. So my door locks, which can be controlled by my home automation system, also have a mechanical latch on them and a physical key. So if I'm away from home and the power goes out, I come home. If it was only an internet connected uh, lock or a lock that had RFID or something along those lines, I probably wouldn't be able to get into the house. But with a physical key, you can still control the mechanical lock. You can get in and you don't have a problem. So those two principles, keep them in mind when you are setting up any kind of home automation system. No external dependencies is rule one and mechanical overrides where it's appropriate is rule two.